So can you build a portfolio with a single fund? That's the question that we're going to explore in this video. And also we're going to see which fund would it be if you really had to build your portfolio with one single fund. Now I'm actually going to give you three options and these options will be based on the level of diversification that you want to achieve. But before even starting that, I think it's very important to ask this question as to what kind of portfolio style aligns with you. Now, if you're a minimalist and you want to keep things very simple while you still want to get the best of the stock market, a simple broad-based market fund, an index fund, is sufficient to cover any market. Now, imagine a scenario. Let's say you were not an Indian. Let's say you were an American and you realize that India is growing, the economy is growing, the middle class is growing. There's probably a very good place to bet on the growth for the next few decades. What would you do? Would you start researching companies in India? Probably not. What you would rather do is you would look at what's the S&P 500 or what's the NASDAQ 100 equivalent in India. Let me just put some of my money there so that I can capitalize on the growth of this country in the long time period. Now, the funny thing is that even Indians can start thinking this way. And what happens when you start thinking in this manner is that you let go of all of the distractions about stock prices and the market going up and down and you let go of all of the things that could lead you to risky behavior. And instead, you're able to tap into your own country's growth, right? So that's what brings us to the point of building a simple index-based portfolio. If you were to do the equivalent of NASDAQ 100 or S&P 500 in India, how would you do that? And this is a freedom portfolio style of investing because it gives you freedom from the market. Now, you could do it with Nifty 50. You could say Nifty 50 is the index that I'm going to focus on. So that's going to cover the top 50 companies as the country's economy will grow. The top 50 businesses are going to show growth and you will see good returns. And even if you look at the past data, um, which, by the way, is, again, not an indicator of the future success. But if you look at the past data of Nifty 50, you'll see that there's consistent growth. And it's going to allocate your portfolio based on the market cap of each company. So the bigger companies will get more money if you put in, let's say, 10,000 rupees. The biggest companies, let's say whether they're Reliance, HDFC, Infosys, and they could keep changing over time, will get most of the money. Um, and then the lowest companies will get a lower amount of that 10,000 rupees. So your portfolio allocation will be adjusted automatically. And hence, you would really not have to worry about looking at your portfolio. You might then say that beyond the Nifty 50 is the Nifty Next 50, which has shown better growth in the past few years because they have more opportunity for growth. They are companies that could be upgraded to the Nifty 50. And then you might say, maybe I want to put my money in the Nifty 100 index. Now, what this index will do is this index will cover the top 100 companies of the country. Now, some people might think that this is similar to NASDAQ 100. I think the difference is that while NASDAQ 100 is obviously a little bit more tech heavy, Nifty 100 is simply just the top 100 companies based on market cap, which again could be, um, you know, IT companies, could be banks. So it's a well diversified index. And hence, I think this is a pretty good place. And if I had to build a minimalist, minimalist portfolio with not a lot of risk, so I was on the lower side of risk, I would probably go with Nifty 50 or Nifty 100, right? Now, of course, as you know that I'm invested in the mid cap as well. So if someone wanted exposure to the next 150 companies, which are the medium um, cap companies, that can be covered by the Nifty um, yeah, you know, Nifty 100 mid cap or Nifty 150 mid cap but then you'll have to buy a second fund. So if we were to limit ourselves to one fund, then the third option would be Nifty 500. And Nifty 500 would also cover your small cap companies, right? So again, you could go different levels of risk. You could say, I'm going to do Nifty 50. I'm going to keep it really safe. Or I want to tap into a little bit more of those potential returns and I'm going to do Nifty 100. You might even go a one step further and say, I probably want to do Nifty 200 index, which is going to cover the top 200 companies. So what's happening here is you are also getting a little bit of the uh, mid cap exposure in this case, because the top 100 companies are your large cap and then the next 100 companies are your mid cap. So it's a combination of your nifty 100 
which is the large cap, and the Nifty mid cap 100, which is a mid cap. And the index combines those two. And you might say, okay, I want to go Nifty 200 with my single fund portfolio. And again, this is a completely freedom style of investing because you don't really have to look at, look at your portfolio if you own a single fund. And it's a good thought experiment because, you know, the way that my portfolio has evolved, I'm happy that it's, uh, you know, grown to this level. It's currently at 3.35 crores. Um, the way it's evolved is actually by making a lot of mistakes. So whenever you see my portfolio, don't just look at the returns or don't just look at the amount. Also know that it's a compounding of mistakes. So even though it's compounding at a good rate and, you know, it's growing, um, I may not have invested in all of those things that I've invested in if I had to start all over again, right? So that's a very important point. And if I had to start again, I might even consider a single fund portfolio. I might consider a three fund portfolio to keep my allocation between um, large cap by Nifty 100, mid cap by 150, and then small cap by Nifty 250 index, separate, hence covering the Nifty 500 companies, but still being able to manage my diversification between large cap, mid cap, and small cap. Um, I may not have gone for actively managed mutual funds at all. You know, that's another decision that I might have taken. So don't go by the portfolio. There could be many mistakes in people's portfolios that they've made over time. And now just to avoid selling, maybe, you know, I don't want to rebalance the portfolio completely. Um, the new investments that I make, I might change my strategy and hence I will keep making the videos to update you on what changes I'm making. But going back to the discussion of the index, um, I would say those are your options. You could go Nifty 50, you could go Nifty 100, you could go Nifty 200, and then you, you could go Nifty 500. Now let's see if we were to if we were to look at the funds that are available um, in um, you know in different categories. So what I'll do is I'll actually just look at it here. Let's look at the uh, different ETFs. Let's start with the best place to search for this would be your dashboard. So wherever you invest in mutual funds, if you invest in uh, mutual funds via coin, which in my case I do, then you could just search for this particular thing there. But you could also do it on ticker tape if you just click on ETFs. Again, these are not sponsored tools. It's just like the tools that I use. Uh, but if you look at the ETFs with Nifty 50, you'll see Nippon India, which probably is the oldest Nifty 50 tracking index. And then you'll see the expense ratio liquidity, which is high in most cases. Nifty 50 is typically going to have high liquidity. Expense ratio and tracking error. Um, you could invest in the ETF or you could invest in the index fund. For most people, index fund is going to be a better choice because looking at a long-term trading perspective, index fund is going to give you the most value um, and you don't really have to trade. But if you also have to trade or if you want to try to time, which I don't suggest, if you want to try to time the market and so forth, then an ETF could work as well. Um, I started with ETFs and hence I'm continuing with ETFs. I get this question a lot. Is it a mistake? Probably, probably not. It's just how I started and I'm continuing with that. At any point, I feel like I could switch to index fund and I'm considering that for my small cap fund as well. So I'm considering investing into a index fund that tracks the small cap 250. Um, I know that I've made videos about this, but I haven't posted an update about this move because I haven't made the move yet. Uh, but the day I do, I will make a video about that uh, because so far I had only used active funds and I might completely switch to uh, passively manage portfolio over time as I, uh, you know, get more and more disconnected from the market and honestly more and more connected with life, parenting, uh, my children. I think that's really the things that are most important. I think a big update, um, you know, big life update is that um, I have my second child, um, you know, one month ago. He's one month old now. So I'm going to focus more on those things and less on even probably making these videos, you know, I could reduce that over time. So as life changes and as things change, I feel more comfortable with sticking to ETFs. And I know that a lot of young people try to make money from the market. My message for them is make money by developing a skill, creating a business or joining companies where you could add value to those businesses or you could add value to people. Keep the market as just a way to park your money so that it compounds over time, but not a way to make your money because it's going to consume you when you try to get into the market. And that, unless that's your profession and that's the only thing that you do full time, I don't think that you want to be consumed by the market. You'd rather want to develop a valuable skill. 
And I think that's also something that I say when I when I you know show my portfolio is that uh, the important thing is not um, how much money it is currently, but how much money I've invested. So if you remove this forty four percent returns, that's all the money that I've invested into the market through my skill, and I run a marketing company which helps me to make that money. And you could take away this portfolio from me, but my knowledge and my skill set in marketing would help me generate the income all over again. And given what I know now about my skill, I could make this money much faster than what I made before. So that's an important thing to understand. Now, uh, back to the point about ETFs, you could actually pick any ETF. It doesn't really matter. I would personally pick either Nippon India or ICICI. They are some of the best numbers. They are uh, some of the trusted ones. Then there's some new ones as well, but I would try to you know pick one of those two. Then we could um, you know look at the same thing with Nifty, uh, let's look at the second option, which is Nifty 100. And Nifty 100 index, I would say pretty much similar options will be available. So you have Nippon India and ICICI. The expense ratio, as you see, has really gone up compared to Nifty 50. And this is, again, another reason why I have a separate investment in Nifty 50 and a separate investment in Nifty Next 50. And that covers my Nifty 100. At the same time, it gives me flexibility to manage the allocation between the two. But when you buy a Nifty 100, the biggest issue is that it's just going to get most of your money invested in the top 50 companies, as you can see on this list. If we actually see the index weight, you'll see 10% is going into HDFC, um, 9%, sorry, 6.95 into Reliance. So by the time you come to the bottom 50 companies, it's pretty much less than 0.1% of allocation. So having a separate Next 50 fund makes, makes a lot of sense. Uh, given the kind of allocation and the expense ratio considerations that you might have. A 0 0.5 or 0 0.4 is actually comparable to very good actively managed mid-cap funds and small-cap funds, just as a sake of comparison. Um, and hence, I don't really buy this index. But again, for someone who just wants exposure, maybe they're sitting outside India, they just want a piece of the country. Or if you're an Indian who really cares about your time and does not want to be consumed by a market, uh, then you might want to go for this as well. Um, Nifty 500, for some reason, it shows um, no index, but there are index tracking this. Um, so if you search for Nifty 500 index funds, um, you should be able to see like a lot of index funds that track this. Uh, but yeah, overall, I think in terms of how I would do this, if I had to buy only one fund, I will pick between Nifty 50 Nifty 100 and Nifty 500 if it's completely broad and the choice uh, being dependent on the di amount of diversification that I want. If I want to buy the entire market, probably Nifty 500. I honestly may not go with that route. I would personally probably just rely on Nifty 50. And uh, if I was given an option to have two funds, I would get a separate Nifty 50 and a separate Next 50. If I was given an option to have three funds, I would also add the mid cap 150. And if I could get four funds, that would be my dream portfolio. It's basically going to cover exactly what Nifty 500 covers, but I'm also going to add a fourth fund, which is um, the Nifty small cap 250 fund and um, Nifty small cap. So let me show you the one that I have selected for me. So that's Nippon India, small cap, 250 fund. Again, these are not spons sponsored videos, um, but I just happen to like the numbers, the metrics with Nippon and ICICI and it comes to index funds. So this is the Nippon India Nifty small cap fund. That would be my fourth fund um, that I would add. And it just basically just tracks the small cap index um, and with those four funds, I would have, uh, and you can you can actually see the comparison here with Nifty 50. I believe they would have shown that. So Nifty Next 50, which is the junior Bs, and then you have Nifty 50 Bank. I don't really believe in the sectoral funds. Um, you can compare with those particular indexes as well. This is your Nifty 50 Small Cap 250 Index, and this is your Nifty 50. This is your... Uh, value of 10,000 rupees. If you were to put that, your one-year tagger was 15,000 with small cap, 13,000 with nifty 50, 21,000 with three years tagger, and uh, 15,000. So you see that in since inception, 37, 22. 
So you see that you'll always get an edge above Nifty 50 because these companies have more potential to grow. Again, I would buy those four separate. My dream portfolio would be four funds. I would buy them separately, the Nifty 50, the next 50, mid cap 150 and small cap 250. And as my decades grow, so every decade I would rebalance to have modifying the exposure between the small cap versus mid cap versus large cap. Uh, but completely okay if someone wants to do it with a single fund. And in that case, I think Nifty 50 would serve as a very good option. Um, you could put your money there, just follow the market, follow the growth, and then make more money outside of the market. I think that's a very good message if young people can understand that because now what's happened is there's a lot of apps, there's a lot of tech, it's become like a game. It's easy for anyone to just trade or invest. So you lose your core time when you could develop a skill into all of these distractions. And then by the time it's time to retire, you are basically relying on the returns of whatever you have invested. And then you're looking for short hacks to increase the returns while the mindset of someone who is focused most of their decades into building a skill. And honestly, all of these influencers, YouTubers, they make money outside of the market. It's very important to understand that. They make a lot of money outside the market. Some people offer coaching for business schools. Some people uh, make money from their own YouTube channels. Some people make money selling courses. They make money from there and then they show their portfolio as a way to get audience, which is exactly what you see with my portfolio. I've made most of the money outside the market, but I want to be honest about it. I want to give this message that you don't want to rely on the market to make your money. You want to rely on the market to let your money grow and compound. So that's all for this video. Hope you found this message useful. I'll see you in the next one.